definitely stay out of that top tier. <laughs> Hello friends, my name is Brandon Dayton, I'm your humble narrator, and welcome back to another bundle banter. Yes, it's been a little while, yes, this bundle's coming out late as heck, but you know what? I got a good excuse. <laughs> Mother Nature brought her uh, foot down right in the middle of town, took down a couple power lines. We were without power for three days, so I had this bundle all written up and ready to go, but I just didn't get it put together and rendered. So uh, I'm going to <laughs> release it seven days late and hope that the views don't suffer too much. This is the Humble Codemasters Bundle 2020, which is ironic because it doesn't feature F1 2020, but there are a ton of racing games, so if that's your thing, then you might dig on this bundle. Me personally, I really don't, but we're going to cover it anyways, so let's look at the tiers. In the $1 tier, you've got Grid Autosport, Toy Box Turbos, Overlord 2, and Operation Flashpoint Dragon Rising. Whoa, army shooter guy, man. In the Beat the Average tier, which is really low at the moment, it's uh, F1 2018. The F1 2018 Headline Contact Pack DLC, Dirt Rally, Dirt 4 DLC, Dirt 4 DLC again, the Team Booster Pack and the Hyundai Rally Car, and then of course Dirt 4, the uh, base game. And then in the very top is tier, for $15, you've got F1 2019 and Dirt Rally 2.0. Neither of those coming with any DLC whatsoever, although there is a lot of DLC if you were so inclined to purchase it. I am not. <laughs> so we'll jump into each of these games individually. I could say that my feelings probably aren't too strong one way or the other on these, just because it's not my genre of gaming necessarily. But if a racing game can't suck me in, then, you know, kudos to it, because I generally don't dig on racing too much. But anyways, the first game up, we've got Grid Autosport. What the fuck, Grid? You've been in every single bundle I've talked about recently. I don't know what else I could say about the same goddamn game all the time. Wait, you look a little different, Grid. Is this a new shirt, or new haircut? Oh, I see, you changed your last name. Grid Autosport is a much more arcadey version of Grid, which might be a positive or a negative depending on your tastes. Grid has always been in the strange position between Sim and Arcade Racer, so it's really nice to see Codemasters leaning into one of those designations a little harder for this release. The tracks in the cars are nice, but the damage is really what drives things home for me, if you'll forgive the pun. Cracked windows, dents and dings, lost parts, it makes losing fun! I think that as far as grid games go, this is one of my favorite entries. That might be a controversial statement for people who swear by the driving sim side of things, but as I've said, I'm not a driving game guy. I'm in it to have funsies, and this game manages to pull that off better than any grid title that I've played previously. If you like arcadey racing, check out Grid Autosport. Toy Box Turbos! Speaking of arcade racing, this is a top-down racer that is quite literally the same as the NES and Genesis Micro Machines game, except, of course, with upgraded graphics. That game was also developed by Codemasters, so I suppose it just kind of makes sense. The strange part is that they obviously didn't get the Micro Machines licensing, so instead we got Toy Box Turbos which is only slightly better than Mini Motors or some other bullshit. Personally, I'd rather get my dose of arcade racing from Grid. Being in the driver's seat feels good, and the visible damage is a hard thing to give up. But Toy Box Turbos is good for a different kind of mood, when you just want to tool around and keep things light. It's pretty decent for local co-op, and I could see myself kicking this game around with the kiddos, especially the little boy. He might be two, but he knows what he loves. And the things he loves most are milk and cars. You gotta respect that kind of laser focus. Toy Box Turbos definitely isn't a mind-blowing game, but it's built decently and performs well enough that I can't shit-talk it too much. And considering how easy it can be for me to put a game on blast, that's a victory. Overlord 2! Truly the odd man out for this bundle, and a complete blast from my past. I played both Overlord and Overlord 2, on their respective Xboxes back in the day. I've been waiting a freaking decade for Overlord 3, but I don't think it's ever gonna happen. 
Sending minions into combat is a great feeling in any game, and Overlord is the first series that gave me that sort of thrill. The second entry in the series is vastly superior to the first, so unless you're a completionist, this will be the one and only version of Overlord that you need. You might be an evil Overlord Sauron wannabe, but that doesn't mean you have to be a complete edgelord. The humor in this game manages to make things much more palatable to me. Despite your status as a maniacal despot, the game still manages to make the player character likable. There are plenty of newer releases out there that can take a note from Overlord regarding execution of an evil simulator game. Four different types of minions and their mounts manage to provide a huge amount of gameplay and manage to serve as a time capsule to one of the best periods in single player gaming. A time before mandatory multiplayer, massive DLC paywalls, and endless microtransactions. Ugh. <sighs> On that thought, maybe I don't want a third Overlord entry after all. I really would like to see it, but I just know they'd fuck it up. Please don't sully my fondest memories of this game. Operation Flashpoint Dragon Rising Codemasters can never quite seem to make up their mind. This is yet another game that straddles the line between military sim and arcadey shooter, although it does lead much more towards mill sim. The problem with that is that, unlike a racing game, it really doesn't work as well for military shooters. If you want something strictly mill sim, Arma is absolutely the best experience you can have. If you're looking for an arcade game, something like Battlefield will serve pretty well. Operation Flashpoint is definitely serviceable. Movement and weapons feel nice and smooth, but I think the game would have benefited massively from choosing to go down one road or the other, instead of trying to go down the middle and getting lost in the woods, so to speak. I'm pretty impressed that an FPS game released in 2009 can look as good as this one does. It's just kind of a shame that the AI is dumber than a bag of ass hair, and your loadout is based on the class with no customization available. Gaming is a tough racket. And if you're picking a military shooter, then there's no real reason to choose Dragon Rising over its competitors. Aside from maybe the price, but considering that I have Arma in my library, I'll choose that any day. More mods, more detail, oh, and a more active multiplayer community. Operation Flashpoint has no multiplayer community to speak of, really. It's not a great game, but it gets a pass. There is some potential there. F1 2018. Hey, now we're cooking with gas. This is a pretty hardcore racing simulator with a fantastic career mode. It does a great job at getting me invested in a genre that I normally wouldn't consider. I'd like to see more crashy parts and explodey bits, but that's not really what F1 is all about. Unless you're actually attending a race, because I'm pretty sure most people in the stands are just there to see a crash. Why else would anyone attend these races, unless it's to watch a steel-belted radial tire bounce into the stand and wipe out an entire generation of water-headed inbred children in one fell swoop? But no shade, though. <laughs> As you'd expect with most sports games that have annual installments, this one isn't that much different from F1 2017, or F1 2019. But it might be worth a look when you can pick it up for a price this low. Like a lot of Codemasters titles, the optimization is Horrible, but the driving is fun. And it has a rival system, which I'm a sucker for. Rivals might just be a series of ones and zeros, but I am gonna beat that sack of pixelated shit into the ground. Why? Well, because he's my rival. Duh. <laughs> That's how it works. F1 2018 Headline Content Pack DLC. Headline. Uh, that's really being generous. This DLC pack adds two more cars to the game. And that's it. You'd think THE headline content pack would offer, I don't know, a little more content. It seems like a dumb way to squeeze people for all they're worth. I don't get a boner for cars. You know what would happen if these two cars were missing from my version of the game? Not a fucking thing. I wouldn't even notice. I guess it's okay that it's included in this bundle, but... It really just kind of feels like a cheap way to try and bulk out the entries. I'm shocked at how bad this DLC is. If you're paying full price for this, then I humbly suggest that you be nominated for permanent removal from the gene pool. I have nothing to say about this predatory piece of dog shit. Moving on. Dirt Rally! An excellent racing sim that is guaranteed to put you through your paces. It came out in 2015, and it still looks amazing. The best part about games that came out in 2015 
besides the fact that it can run on a literal potato laptop at your grandma's house, is that DLC was still somewhat taboo at that point. That's right, there is not a single piece of DLC in Dirt Rally to worry about. I'm terrible at this game, but god damn do I enjoy failing. You don't just smash the gas and zip around the track, Dirt Rally expects you to focus on the track and your vehicle. You need to invest yourself in the challenge and put your thinking cap on, which I'll be the first to admit isn't really my strong suit. If I'm going to play a racing game, it's generally so I can switch my brain off and just tool around. If you get really good at this title though, I can imagine it being an extremely satisfying game. Well, it isn't really my cup of tea, I can certainly tell you that it's worth its salt. Dirt 4. While the DLC in Dirt 4 is minimal, the game itself doesn't really stack up to Dirt Rally in my opinion. The tracks all kind of feel the same. It's like Groundhog's Day. There are no amazing landmarks or little tweaks that make the tracks stand out from one another and feel polished to perfection. They're all just kind of bland. Somehow, even with the graphics being as disappointing as they are, the optimization is still an issue. The driving itself feels pretty nice, but why would I want to drive through the boring environments offered here? I'll be completely real with you. This feels like a downgraded version of Dirt Rally to me. You can certainly squeeze some fun out of it, but it isn't the definitive experience by a long shot. I will say though, at least you get every piece of DLC in this bundle, no matter how disappointing that DLC may be. With that said, let's look at the Dirt 4 DLC Hyundai R5 Rally Car. You ever wanted to drive a Hyundai? Yeah, me either. But now you can! Way to bulk out those bundle slots. I mean, the car sounds good handles pretty well, but it's nothing to write home about. It, it's a Hyundai. <laughs> Dirt 4 DLC Team Booster Pack. One rank B engineer, two rank A facilities, a unique team offer, but really nothing that can't be attained by actually playing the game. It'll help you progress faster if you haven't started building a team, and if you have, well, prepare to start over. All of this DLC is really just taking the piss, but at least it's not as egregious as the DLC for the last two games in this bundle. F1 2019. Alright, well, remember what I said about these annual installment sports games? You really don't need to get F1 2019 if you have F1 2018. 2019 does lean back towards the arcade side of things, but allows for some customization so you can get just the kind of race that you're looking for. It's a pretty nice entry with some decent additions to the career mode that almost make this like an RPG racing game. Obviously, that's a really nice thing in my book. But aside from those couple of things, it's just the same sort of F1 experience. That's not a bad thing. It's definitely a fun title, but it doesn't really do anything to set itself apart. And in my opinion, it isn't really worth climbing into the top tier of this bundle for. I should also state that the DirectX 12 version is notoriously unstable even for a Codemasters game, but I think that's probably more of a problem with DirectX 12 than with this game itself. Or, who knows, it could be a combination of both. The perfect storm of shitty software design that will lead to more crashes than you can shake a shit-covered stick at. There are 112 pieces of DLC for F1 2019. 112. Remember that little two-car DLC from 2018? Well, I guess it was a success. There's plenty to love about F1 2019, but almost just as much to hate. I'll be sticking with F1 2018, personally. Dirt Rally 2.0 While F1 seemed to drift from racing sim toward arcade racer, Dirt seems to have gone from racing sim to... even more racing sim. This is a fucking hardcore title that I could barely wrap my head around. If given the choice between racing on track or racing off-road, I really think that I would pick off-road racing and I assume that this game would easily beat the crap out of the F1 series, but surprisingly, it doesn't. Dirt Rally 2.0 requests, no, demands that you get to know your car and what it's capable of. The career mode is nice, but they made one big screw up by requiring it to be always online. Why? Why would you? There is no reason! Ugh. After tooling around for a while, all of your playtime disappears into the ether because the game couldn't fucking sync itself? I can't repair my car because RaceNet failed to connect? 
It's absolutely ridiculous. This could have been a better title than Dirt Rally, but one slight misstep sends it tumbling down into the bowels of my Steam library. There are also, of course, 44 pieces of DLC, which is just a stupid amount, isn't it? When are we going to say enough is enough? I don't normally get so triggered, that's a lie, but to see a title with such great potential flush it all away to make a few extra bucks by either shoveling DLC or keeping players online in what I assume is an attempt to deter pirates? Fuck. It's just too stupid, dude. So, what do I think of the bundle? Definitely stay out of that top tier. If you really like racing games, I guess you can beat the average. There's some decent stuff there. But honestly, I'd say probably just throw down a dollar, get Overlord 2, Operation Flashpoint, Toilet Box Turbos, and Grid Autosport. For 25 cents, those are some pretty killer games, you know. Really, the only one that would probably interest me, Grid Autosport and Overlord 2, but then whatever, it's like a buy one, get one or something like that. I will say at least Codemasters has their niche, and overall they stick to it pretty hard. They are the racing game people, and that seems to, uh stay pretty consistent as the years go on, which is kind of sad to me because it does seem like they're capable of doing other stuff pretty well. I really loved Overlord 2, I'm going to tell you right now, I missed that. <laughs> but yeah, they, they just decided to, to go down the racing game path, which I guess that's fine. There are people out there that love their racing games, I'm just not really one of them. I'd rather go on a grand adventure that I couldn't possibly go on in real life then drive a car, which, I mean, I probably couldn't drive any of these cars in real life, but I, I can drive a car. I know what driving a car is like. I don't know what casting a fireball is like. <laughs> one sounds amazing to me, the other one sounds pretty monotonous, but that's not to knock people who enjoy the genre. It's just different strokes for different folks, you know what I mean? But anyways, friends, if you do decide to pick up this bundle, I hope that you will use my affiliate link. It is in the description and also in a pinned comment. I'll get uh, a little bit of money from that, which is, you know, pretty nice. Support the channel just a little bit. Make it do what it do. I'd also appreciate if you like, comment, and or subscribe on this video. We've also got links in the description, of course, to Twitter, Discord, Patreon. And I'd like to shout out each and every one of my beautiful patrons helping me to live the dream. We've got Mr. Weasel, Lady Nix, Radimus Cisco, Nico the Legend, Crimson Albedo, Dot Nathan, and Damon Darkstar. Thank you guys so much for supporting the channel monetarily, and thank you everybody else for listening along with me. I definitely appreciate you guys, even if the bundle's been out for a little while. I know we're a little bit late bringing the heat, but, uh... I'm going to try and stay caught up, unless another bundle fest comes, or something like that. God, f Fanatical, why would you do this to me? There's a lot of bundles still over there to cover. I might do some of my favorites. I'll have a look through and see what we got over there, just to keep the bundle content coming. Because it's not easy to put these things together, but I do it for you. So thank you again for listening. I will see you guys in the next one. Keep yourselves safe out there, and until then, friends, bye-bye.